So welcome to class for, I guess this is Thursday, April 2nd. Um, it's kind of been a, well, I mean, everything's been weird, but uh, this class in particular, because we, you know, we didn't meet for like two weeks and then we had one meeting and then we took a week off because we didn't have class on Tuesday. Um, so it, it, anyway, it's been sort of um, fits and starts here, but hopefully we'll, we'll get things rolling. So uh, a couple of just sort of um, course programming notes. Uh, the first thing is if you look in the Slack channel um, under the advanced comp spring 20 um, channel, um, I've posted in there a um, PDF of a textbook on statistics and data analysis for physicists. Um, so let me, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. Okay, so here's the, here's the, is it sharing? Can you guys see that screen? Uh, give it a second. My computer is deciding to. I can see it. I can okay. It. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there, but it somehow paused my screen sharing. So let me scroll up to the top. Uh, this is a book. These guys are particle physicists. Um, and this is a book that they wrote basically to teach um, beginning graduate students how to do the kind of statistics you have to do in particle physics. Um, particle physics is basically a good analogy is it's trying to figure out how cars work by taking two cars and smashing them into each other at full speed and then trying to examine the wreckage and using that to figure out how the car was put together. Um, as you can imagine, when you, if you smash two cars together a hundred times, you're going to get a hundred different car wrecks, right? And the debris pattern is going to be different. And on one of them, the wheel is going to fly off. And on the other one, it's going to catch on fire. And, you know, like all kinds of crazy different things are going to happen if you repeat it over and over and over again. Um, and so you have to do some pretty careful statistics in order to figure out how that, in order to figure out how looking at all these car wrecks tells you anything about the cars themselves. So um, the particle physics folks are, are pretty darn good at this because they have to be. So let me just show you a little bit about this book. Uh, so first of all, um, we are not going to go through all of this in any, uh, well, we're not going to go anywhere close to over all of this. Um, basically, what we're going to do is, what I'd like you all to do is read chapter one uh, by next Tuesday. And chapter one is just base, sort of basics about, it gets all philosophical about what do statistics mean? Because anybody who spends any time thinking about statistics tends to get really philosophical about it and be like, well, are we actually measuring probability? Because we can't repeat something an infinite number of times. And what does it all mean? I don't care, right? But you should probably know because there are two different schools of thought and they actually lead to functionally different statistical methods. Um, so you should read these things. Um, you should know that there is such a thing as a frequentist view of statistics and a Bayesian view of statistics. And that's about all I, you should know there. Um, for also for Tuesday, I'd like somebody to present on chapter two. Um, so does anyone want to volunteer? It's quite short. As you can see, it's only like three pages. Uh, I was going to volunteer before all this uh, online stuff happened, so I can just go ahead and do it. Okay. So we'll put Bjorn down for chapter two on Tuesday and we'll start talking about the basics of statistics. 
Um, and basically what I'm gonna do is ask somebody to present a chunk of this um, every time, every week, or I'm sorry, every class period, right? So Bjorn's gonna present on chapter two on uh, Tuesday, and then we'll have somebody else present on um, the beginning of chapter three on Thursday, and we'll just keep working our way through. Where we really want to get to is we want to get through chapter three. We're going to skip chapter four because we're not actually doing measurements, and we're going to um, we're going to go through chapter five. Okay, so chapter five gets into uh, basically how to use random numbers to generate to do statistics. Um, so that'll take us, a, that'll take us a few weeks, uh, to get through, but where the reason I want to do this is because eventually I want to talk about some machine learning and machine learning is basically, they're basically statistical processes. Um, and so to make any sense of them, uh, the algorithms, you need to have a basic background in statistics. So I'm going to try to give you a basic background in statistics remotely. I have no idea how this is going to work, but you know, at least we can read through it and go over it. So um, you can get this PDF on the Slack channel. The nice thing about this book is that it is open sourced, meaning that they just threw it out there on the internet. So we didn't even have to pirate the thing. Um, you can buy an actual textbook. And if you are particularly passionate about statistics, you should probably do that. Um, but this will easily serve our purposes. Okay, questions about any of that? All right. Um, let's talk about uh, other things. So after thinking about this for a little bit, I think what will probably be the most productive thing is for me to schedule, uh, so we'll do, we'll do short meetings, short classes at our scheduled course time over the course of the, you know, the semester, right? So every Tuesday and Thursday we'll be here. We'll talk about some statistics. Um, as it moves on a little bit further, we'll talk about um, some ways to apply these things and how to program them up and do these sorts of things, okay? Um, but those will be fairly short. I'm going to try to keep them to under an under a half hour. So we'll be done by, you know, 10 o'clock, give or take a little bit. And then what I'd like to do is schedule a time, you know, roughly an hour a week um, with each of the three groups to do a separate Zoom chat with just the members of that group and work on their projects. So I'm not trying to hop between this, these, uh, you know, breakout rooms or do any of that stuff. I can just focus on, we're gonna do, you know, traveling sales or not, this chunk of time, we're gonna do the Canopy Wave group, this chunk of time, we're gonna do, right, uh, the, the Galaxy group, a different chunk of time. Does that sound workable? Yeah. Works well yeah, for good. Sure. Okay, people seem positive about that. So the thing we need to sort out is when, which group is meeting. So we can do one of the groups now. Okay, so there are a number of options here. We can do one of the groups Tuesdays for the rest of our regularly scheduled class time. One of the groups Thursdays for our regularly scheduled class time. That leaves one group sort of floating out into the ether, but. Um, my schedule at this point is incredibly, uh, so I'm very busy, but I don't actually have much schedule. Um, I just have, you know, 18,000 things to do and 500 emails to respond to. Um, so I'm widely open throughout the week. So I don't know if you guys want to, I guess we don't have to decide right this minute, but, um, if you guys want to, maybe on the Slack channel or something, um, you know, throw out some times and figure out when would work for you guys, uh, we can do that. 
I noticed that, uh, so Josh and, um, Josh and Dylan and Leonard, you guys have a regular time, right? Yeah, I was just going to mention that as well. We, we already plan on meeting Wednesdays in the evening, so. Okay, what time Wednesdays? Uh, I think it was 5 o'clock, um, if I remember right. I don't know if anybody else remembers for sure. I'm pretty sure it was around 5. Yeah, I think it was 5. Okay. 5 o'clock is a little tough for me. Um, do you guys – I mean, for, okay, so – let me also explain this. I don't think we'll be able to get everything you need to do done in this class in the one hour meeting, right? There's still be a lot of other stuff to work on outside of that. Yeah. That being said, um, you know, hopefully that'll help, right? That, that we'll get time in there that, that works for you guys. Um, so I don't know that I could do Wednesdays at five. Um, so do you guys want to talk it over and see what, um, I don't know, what's the best way to do this? Should I put out a list of times that would work for me? Should I, um, do you guys want to pick times? Does somebody want Tuesdays at, you know, at 10? Somebody want Thursdays at 10? You could do like a when is good or something. Okay, we can do that. So, um, so I'll put I'll put that together and and throw that up on the Slack channel. Um, okay. Apparently Sean is frozen, which is why we record these things. Okay, um, so I was also thinking, and I wanted to get your feedback on this about um, sort of the the final whatever, right? The how do we present this stuff? Um, it really bothers me that we won't be able to do the the college poster session, and I think I think it's very valuable for you guys to get the chance to present things. That being said, right now conferences are, um, you know, pretty much just all burned to the ground. <laughs> um, there's almost nothing going on conference-wise in terms of physical in-person conferences, even through the, the summer. And I'm not sure what's going to happen next fall because nobody knows what's happening. So, um, so I don't know. I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Would you guys rather do a presentation or would you rather do a poster? I'd probably rather do a poster personally. Yeah, I think, I think so as well. Poster probably be good. I think we could do like a poster, but we could still like present, we could kind of present on the poster. Um, like uh you know kind of how we would do in our regular um like early in the semester when we had our regular astro meetings and sean and cindy presented on their posters um and then at least we would have something and we could present that next semester uh you know if things have gone back to normal i like bjorn's idea Okay, well, um, does that sound good to everybody? We'll do posters. We'll, we will schedule, we're required to do something for a final exam. Or obviously it's not gonna be an exam for this class, but for finals week, we're supposed to do something. Um, it, it's really, it's really weird. The, the university like, I mean, it was very clear that they didn't think this through before they canceled classes and, and in-person classes. And frankly, that's understandable because there wasn't really time to think it all through. Nobody had planned this out before. Like what happens if there's a global pandemic and we have to move everything online in a week, right? 
but one of the things that's pretty clear is that they didn't think this through before because now they're saying they're sending out all this stuff about um you know we could meet at or you know how how is everybody doing finals and now the administration really is concerned with are we doing finals appropriately um which you know of course we're not right i mean of course this this isn't the way we wanted to do things um so anyway the the point i guess is i think that would be a good thing to do for our final in this class is to schedule a time um we'll probably just use our scheduled final um but you know there's only only a few of us so we could move it around if we needed to uh but we'll we'll schedule a final um and we'll have each group present on their their poster right so we'll talk a little bit that means we'll need to talk a little bit more about putting together posters and things but um but i think that's a i think that's a useful way to go i do like bjorn's thought too that obviously it wouldn't be for this class because this class will end at the end of the semester but moving forward uh, all of these projects are getting to the point where they could very nicely be a poster you present at a conference um so you know I think it'd be a very, these, these are nice things to present somewhere, even if we can't do it where we had planned, so. Okay, um, with that, um, I'm noticing that people are already thinking about um, the meeting times, so, um, okay, Galaxy Modeling Group wants Tuesdays at 10. So we'll give that to them. It's sort of first come, first serve on this stuff. Um, okay, so we'll plan on that. Um, I'll 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 uh, I'll post a poll um, so that has some available times and and you guys, you know what I might do? I might not even do a poll. I might just post something that has my available times, and then you guys will have to confer within your groups about it. Um, I will say. Uh, Blake and Harmon, um, Eric is in a little bit of a different situation because he doesn't have a, um, a computer that can run Zoom. And so we haven't quite figured that out yet. He's still working on, we're still trying to work on, okay, if we can't use Zoom, uh, you know, what does he do? Um, the good news is he can access um, and, and run, run Parafoam remotely. Um, he can run it on uh, on the 123 machines. Unfortunately, he can't uh, run Paraview, but he can run Parafoam. Or, I'm sorry, not Parafoam, uh, OpenFoam. Um, so anyway, all of this is to say that we will um, we'll have to work that out a little bit. But 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 hopefully on the Slack channel we can figure out which groups want which times, and and we'll get that all scheduled. Um, Okay, uh, a few last things. One, galaxy modeling folks. Um, if you guys have a minute, um, sometime in the next day or so, I wanna talk to you guys about the Symplectic Integrator. I think I've got that figured out. Um, so we can, we can chat. I know um, Sean is having some Zoom problems and so we may need to do that at a different time because he seems to be, oh, he's I'm back. There. Hey, Sean. I am back. It, I think the internet in this house is kind of interesting because apparently it doesn't work in this room if the door is closed. Mm, that's fun. So, oh yeah. But All right. So we were just saying that um, I've got a I've got a couple of things to talk about uh, for the with the Galaxy people about the symplectic integrator, um, mm -hmm. and um, then on the to do list. The um, so the canopy waves group and the um, and the traveling sales chinot group um, we'll have to pick some times um, that'll work for you and I'll post some things on um, on the Slack channel about that and everybody read uh, chapter two or chapters one and two um, in the probability and statistics book. Uh, that I posted on the Slack channel as well. And we'll talk about that in class on Tuesday. 
Okay, how are we feeling? All right, so I, feel like I, I, guess, I guess the one other thing I should ask is, does everybody have something that they can be working on in some way, shape, or form? Yeah. I'm not exactly sure, but I think I'm talking to me and Blake are going to talk about it right now and I'll figure it out. Okay. Well, good. You guys are easy to work with. I tell you, trying to get 204A students to do stuff like take initiative and figure things out on their own is like pulling teeth. Um, but, you know, you guys, I just sort of say, okay, work on stuff and you do. So that's nice. Okay. So we will plan to talk on Tuesday. Um, Everybody else is welcome to stick around, but I'm going to, uh, well, let's see. So Bjorn, uh, Sean, and Cindy, is now a good time to chat? I mean, I'm free. Okay. That was fun for me. All right, great. I'm going to stop the recording.